Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to welcome those of you viewing on BiggerClub.net back to the 32nd edition of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. This is day number seven. We started with 233 of the world's greatest players. Two gentlemen remain in the tournament. Race 211 has been the format all week. The uh, race changes in the finals to one race to 13 games. At this time, we'd like to introduce our two principals. Our first gentleman is sponsored on tour by Bugsy's Promotions, TravelOutlet.com, and Guinness Beer. He's a former World 8 Ball Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, and he is the reigning World Nine Ball Champion from the Republic of the Philippines. Please welcome Mr. Ronnie Alcano. Thank you. And his opponent is sponsored on tour by the BCA Pool Leagues. He was runner-up at this year's BCA Open in May of, the, of 2007. Runner-up at the World Summit of Pool in June of this year. He went on to win the World 10-Ball Championships. Please welcome the reigning World 10-Ball Champion, Young Gun from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Mr. Shane Van Boning. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to send it to the booth. Take it away, Jim White and Danny DiLiberto. Everybody have a good time. Gentlemen, you may lag for the first break. Screw it together. Let's get it on. Well, as no one else can do it, the inimitable Scott Smith. And Shane Van Boning, Ronnie Elcano set to rock here. It's a race to 13, the final of the 32nd annual U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. A packed arena here at the Conference Center in Chesapeake, as you would expect. These two have set the house alight. Played unbelievable nine ball for seven days. Went through 233 players. 25 countries represented here. And it's the Philippines and the reigning world nine ball champion, reigning world eight ball champion, looking for the triple crown in the US Open. And the road bump on his way is arguably one of the best young players on the planet, Shane Van Boning, looking for the US Open title. Might well be the first of many to come. And Ronnie Elcano. Well, just brief hold up here. And we'll be getting things underway. Elcano winning the lag. I want to say something about Elcano because up until a year ago, I never knew any of these guys. And in the last year, they really made a splash. But last year, when John Smith won the tournament, he had to go by Ron Alcano, and he was happy to beat him, and he came up to me right after the match. He said, I am so happy to beat this guy. He said, he might be the best player in the world. He's sure been showing it lately. Well, Alcano placing the cue ball over on the right-hand side of the table as he looks, and these players have both been using the cut break, looking to hit that one and draw that cue ball into the side cushion. Been very successful. One ball into the side. And he's got an open shot at the two. Look at that ball still spinning. See it? He made two balls. Ball finally stopped spinning, now he can shoot. Oh, very close to that side pocket. He had a very small margin for error. That's a terrific shot from Elcano. And I just want to let our viewers at home know that guesting in with us and he's going to throw in his two cents into the pot here as he's been helping out all week. And great to have him here, Jay Helford. Thank from you, Jay. California, my old good friend, Jay Helford. Making, so a, making a cameo appearance, Jay. <laughs> and may I add, he was a pretty good player. 
Uh, How much do I owe you for that? No, but don't quit your jab. <laughs> this is a great start from Elcano, and just the way he wanted to get out of the gate. Because we all know who sent Ronnie Elcano to the loser's bracket, and emphatically, 11-4 Shane Van Boning last night. But it's all about having the last laugh. Yeah, that's a great saying, right? He who laughs last, laughs best. <laughs> I don't know what that means, really. Well, Ronnie Elcano may tell you if he can get through Van Boning in this one, he'll be the one with the biggest smile. The nine down, and it is the reigning world champion that secures the opening rack. Slides the beat over. The race to 13 has begun. And well, Elcano takes first blood. Well, let me say something real quick here, because the other night we had a little problem on one of the tables. I got to tell you this, 46 years playing this game, I've never played on a finer table than the diamond table. We used the table for Corey Duell the other night where the balls were sticking. A plastic bottle was stuck in the table. They were not supposed to play on that table. Had nothing to do with the equipment. Amen. Yeah, these diamond tables are awesome. They are the most consistent table I've seen as well, Jay. No argument there. And uh, I know, Danny, you uh, you were quick to uh, to point that out because they did have problems on that table, and it was all sorted. There was a bottle there, so done and dusted. And thank goodness there's no bottles finding their way into pockets on the main table. And Jerry Cockrell, who's been putting that chameleon rack on the balls here on our match table in the chalk off arena. Just making sure there's a lot of people in here so you know it's gonna be very damp. The temperature will probably steadily rise. And that's gonna make this table play even a little trickier. Four and a half inch pockets at the opening and it narrows into the drop of the pocket so you've really gotta be accurate. Well, he's checking the rack. I'm, I want to say one more thing. Greg Sullivan, manufacturer of the diamond table, <coughs> has done more for the game than any other manufacturer ever. Good man for pool. Ronnie Elcano is going to look to fill these diamond pockets. Rack number two. Just eyeing up that one again. Had a very successful break in the opener. He'll be looking to duplicate that feat. And that's just the fickleness of nine ball. You try to hit him the same way from the same spot and nothing drops. So we get our first look at Shane Van Boning, the reigning world 10 ball champion, 24 years of age from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And he has been the buzz of the pool playing community, certainly in North America, if not around the world. You know, that's very complex to break because I never could understand it in my life. You put the ball in the same place, the rack the same, you hit the cue ball the same speed, one rack you make three, the next rack you make nothing. And, and that's what's fabulous about this game, that you never know what's going to happen with the break. Just overcooked that, but he was on a good line and therefore drops nicely from the one to the two. But it's going to take a good shot on the three because it doesn't look like it goes past the eight, and his only option may be to play the three into the eight for a combination. Well, he'll let us know shortly what he's planning. Well, did he play for the combination or does the ball pass? Certainly doesn't look like it does. No. And he's going to have awkward cueing bridging over those colors. But he's got a space between them to be able to cue at them nice and level. And that doesn't hurt him. No, he made the combination oh, like you said. He's played that absolutely perfect, right, Danny? That's the thing about a combination. The ball you use to hit the object ball with, you got to know where that's going to. You can't just cinch the ball, and he played it this way. 
Shane went through a number of top players getting to the final here. Most recently in the hot seat match, Tomoko Makari from Japan, and he beat Ronnie Elkano the round before that, but took out Marcus Shamat from Sweden, Ronnie Wiseman, Sparky Farrell, played Silver Ochoa, a very good young player from Texas in his first match. And that was on the TV table here. And you know what I've found with Shane is every match he's played, he played an unbelievable match against Ronnie Elkano, but it looks like his game has got more and more consistent. And he's gonna need to be consistent and consistently good if he's gonna beat Elkano twice. Well, his emotions are perfect. You know, he doesn't look rattled at all. He looks like he's rising to the occasion and it's not overwhelming him, at least visibly. We don't know what's going on inside him, but he sure looks like a cool customer. Well, I came to the arena about an hour and a half before the start of this match and it was scheduled for 7.30. We didn't get started till about 8.15. But Shane was on the table. Surprise, surprise, he was hitting <laughs> balls an hour and a half before. And every time there was a, a table open in the venue here, it didn't matter what day it was, it wasn't long before you saw Shane on it hitting balls. You know, and that sort of dedication and desire, that too can be very intimidating. Other players see that and you try and match that in your own world and your own practice regime. Now he raises the bar very high in that aspect. Well, he told me that in South Dakota, he practices a lot and by himself. He's learned all this stuff by himself. Of course, watching a few tapes and being around the players, but he doesn't have players to play with in South Dakota. This well, nine. Maybe one player he has to play with. I don't know. This nine into the bottom left. And down it goes. And Van Boning and Ronnie Elkano, 1 1. This does promise to be a real. Well, it's going to be. A photo finish, I think. This is going to go right down to the wire. These two are going to go hand in hand. I want to so hear get Jay's used to this picks. score. Who do you pick to win this match? Are you partial to any? Are you pulling for anybody? I'm not pulling for anybody, and I'm not partial to anybody, but uh, Shane just put a pretty good whipping on Ronnie last night, 11 to 4, and uh, believe me, neither one of those guys have forgot about that. Well, Ronnie better forget it because it doesn't help to take it into the next game. This is a new day, and this is for all the marbles. So he has to forget what this guy did to him, unless he does it again. <laughs> <laughs> Rack number three, Van Boning from the other side of the table. Interesting, and he'll pull the cue ball over to the side cushion as well. Look at this. Well, he made three balls. Made three balls. And I'll tell you, he is sitting pretty nice on the three. The four is right over the corner pocket, so he may have to try and play a combination. And he's gonna have to be careful. The only way he's gonna get that four is possibly with a double kiss. Yeah, it's a little tricky. And if you try to play on the inside of it, you might knock it away somewhere. So he has to be careful here. He got a great opportunity to go ahead to nothing. But this is this looks like the whole puzzle right here. Well, he played it high and controlled the cue ball and the three very nicely. He's got a nice angle now to go around the back of the seven and the nine, which offer a combination depending on how he sits on the six. But the seven and the nine, he'll go around the back of the seven and the nine here and back towards the five, which is at the opposite end of the table. He's got to use the uh, rake, but I don't think that's going to hurt him none. 
He uses it perfectly. He looks like a, a snooker player the way he uses that bridge. Well, the one thing that I see from a lot of the pool players that use the bridge is they hold it too high. They don't try and cue at it as level as they do. Most right. snooker players, you see, they hold it a lot lower. Well, actually, it's a, an extension of your bridge hand, and, and you need to have it as parallel as possible to the table, just like your uh, cue stick. Danny, correct me if I'm wrong, but I always learned when I was a young guy is you put the bridge on the table. You don't hold the bridge up in the air. Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you got to put pressure on it so it doesn't wobble when you're stroking. And he's got a nice angle on the six here. He can draw back up the left-hand side of the table as we look and play that seven to the bottom right. This is what Shane did to Elcano on the winner's bracket. He just kept him in his chair. And in fact, he led that 5-1 at one stage. And it seemed like every time Elcano you know, tried to come back at him and put a rack together. Van Boning just kept vaulting further ahead. Put three packs together on him twice. And before Elkano really got any air, he was 8-3 down. What a nice crisp stroke he hit that ball with, didn't he? He's going to be around for a long time. Little movement there. His head I just moved. Him. I got him. Every time I brag about mm, somebody. Just peek. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, he didn't lose this yet, but Elcano's got to be happy if this nine ball stopped on the lights. You know, you can't moan about, you know, you don't have a hanger. He never expected well. to get to the table. Welcome to the U.S. Open final. There's going to be balls missed, rarely. Have we seen a final where a player's just gone out and shot lights out? He couldn't take advantage. Couldn't take advantage, and well, Shane happily gets back to the table after an error. Yeah, and that's going to go a long way to erase the memory of the first missed nine. If he knocks this down the cushion and in, Shane will be able to go back to his chair, and that first miss nine never happened. And in fact, Elcano will be the one to think about missing a nine. Long, straight nine. Gets it. And Shane Van Boning survives the scare. 2-1 he leads, and with the break to come in rack four. In all fairness to Elcano, that was not an easy shot. You know, if you're in rhythm running the rack and you fall there, like I said, you're in rhythm. The guy left it to him, he got up cold, and he missed it. It was not a real easy shot. But those are the sort of chances that you've got to take at this level, Danny. You, you know, you get a missed nine. I think Ronnie, you know, he'd like to bet he can make a shot like that. You're right. The guy gave you a chance. You got to punish him for it, and he got away with it. You know, no matter where it stopped, you have to make it. However, the race to 13, a little longer. It's been 11 all week. They just extended it an extra two racks here for the final. Which favors the better player, but who is that? That's what we're hoping to find out. Well, my observation this week is these are the two best players. I think consistently they have played better. Than I 100% I agree with you, Jay. They have played better than anybody else. That's why they're here in the finals. Rack number four. And Shane with a 2-1 lead, still from the left-hand side of the table as he looks. And when he was here practicing on the table earlier, all he was doing was hitting breaks. So he's going to have as good a feel for the way this table is breaking as anybody. 
we might be ready for a safety here. I don't see anything. What kind of safety? Here's what I like. I like hitting the one here, banking it this way, and coming one, two, and try to freeze them right on this pink. The reason I like that is the worst can happen if the one sticks out, it's far down the table and he shouldn't have a shot. I don't, I don't think he's planning to shoot now, do you? He had a look to see if the bank went, just holding his finger on the spot where the one would be contacting the cushion, but I don't know whether or not it gets by the eight. I don't think it does. At this point, he could really uh, put a nail in the coffin by playing my shot, and it's not that easy, I mean, not that tough to execute. Well, he went one rail. I would have pulled it around two rails. That would have gave you a little more speed, maybe a little more control. He didn't leave a shot, but he left a hit. Now, you know, this he may have to jump into the cushion because where that one is finished, and again, assuming Ronnie can't see it, and it doesn't look like he can from that camera angle, maybe he can get the, yeah, you know something? I'm changing my story. I think he can get to the edge of this. Yeah, he can hit the edge, but be careful. You might get a kiss off that rail if you bank it. Well, he didn't get a kiss. It'd be harder. He'd have made the nine. That nine was tracking right to the side pocket. Yeah, but he wouldn't have taken it because he didn't play it. <laughs> He's a gentleman. <laughs> well, Shane saw Makari fluke a couple nine balls in his a side final didn't phase him. He still scraped home an 11 9 win over the Japanese star. First time I heard that word fluke was going to Canada and playing snooker. It's a very common word for lucking something in or getting lucky the situation. And being a fisherman, I like that word. Because you know, fluke is a fish. And all we have here are sharks. <laughs> There's a couple minnows up here. Speak for yourself, John Alden. <laughs> I meant me and Jimmy, not you, Danny. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about Jimmy. Jimmy could dab it. I tell the people out there, you know, the only time I ever saw him play was in Louisville, and he hung the nine ball up on the hill with Efren, or he would have beat Efren. Don't tell me Jimmy can't play. Shane, again, using the bridge here, so very awkward shot. Oh, he was taking a free shot at the nine, I believe. That was good thinking because as long as you plant that cue ball on the end rail like he did, take the shot because no matter where the one stops, it's going to be difficult. Will he shoot, boys? Will he shoot? Well, this is one that's going to test your nerve, Shane. Just contemplating his effort. But if he does try to slow roll this into the top left corner, take a courageous effort. Courageous effort to, to take it on. Well, if he rolls it in the right speed, he's going to have position. That's what you don't want. You don't want to shoot shots that you're not going to get rewarded for if you pocket them. But I think he can get position if he makes this. Oh, he's got it. What a hit. What a shot. What, what a, a shot. shot from Ronnie Altino there. So I, I like to, when I'm teaching, just, you know, don't shoot a ball that is tough to make. And if you make it, you don't win for sure. But if you miss it, you can lose. Avoid those situations. Well, he looks to punish that effort from Van Boning. And you know, with a very good one. Like I said, it took a lot of a lot of courage to shoot that because he knew he had to slow roll it and it was either ever going to be in or over the pocket. Yeah, he was, he's I'm just sorry. he's just matured this situation to some of, to one of some promise now, Danny. Yeah, he was betting the game on that shot, and I think he won the bet. Awful good shot, especially under the conditions here. This is like he won the world title last year in, in uh, Taipei. Uh, yeah, it was Manila. Manila, actually, oh, in yeah. the Philippines. And 
now, if he can add the U.S. Open to it. Well, That's his second him. miscue. He miscued in his match against Tomoki McCurry, McCurry as well. Oh, that's a bad time to miscue. Second miscue I've seen from Elcano this week, and both of them came at crucial moments. The first one, thankfully for him, didn't cost him the match. This one has cost him momentum. Well, Shane doesn't have a shot, but he's still happy to be at the table because if he didn't miscue, this game was history. But he does have a pretty good safe, at least to leave distance. If you snooker the guy, it's a bonus. But cut this ball, bank it this way, and go one rail this way and try to leave him distance. Distance is the main thing. Snooker is a bonus. He looks like he's aiming. He looks like he's going to try to fire at something here. He did. He, I never dreamed he'd cut that one in. And look at the results. Is that amazing? What a, what a shot. Again, you know, I think you sense the moment. There's a time to attack when you know that you can really fire some psychological body blows over to your opponent. It's almost worth the risk. And You're I think, right. I think Shane sensed that. Psychologically, after the guy gave the game away, you can punish him by doing something spectacular. Elcano cannot be loose from here on. And you know, just <coughs> again alluding to that miscue, how do you feel? I, I can tell you coming from a snooker background, if I start miscuing, I'm thinking about it every time I'm yeah. digging into the cue ball. Every time you try to draw the ball after that, you know what would wind up happening? You'll underdraw the ball being cautious. Yeah, you that, won't hit it as low. That's exactly. I mean, Ronnie hasn't stopped working on his tip. and He had his tip pick out right away, and I guarantee you every time now he's going to be going low on that cue ball, he'll be thinking about it. Shane, on the other hand, will be thinking about slotting a few more beads on his side of the score. 3-1 he leads, and he's got the break in rack five. Did you ever miss Q in an important match? It's like a shock. You can't believe it happened it's, at first. You it know, takes a little it, while. It's bone chilling. When you, when, when you miss Q in a key time, you, you feel it through every bone yeah. in your body. You just... You know, it's a feeling that unless you've experienced, you can't possibly explain. Oh, and yes, I have. <laughs> yeah, everybody has, and it, and it just, you don't believe it happened. It takes a, a second or two to realize I miscued. Quick look at the rack again. So important. This is the biggest match of Shane Boning's young career. And he, he doesn't wants like them, it. He wants them re racked. A 3 1 lead. And the chameleon rack used here exclusively in the chalk off arena. It's been here all week. And happy. Shane back over the same side of the table that he's seen success from. Rack five, looking to extend his lead. He didn't hit those quite as hard. He took a little off that break. And, <clears throat> and he may pay noise. the price. Oh, look at the layout here. The one and two and the three is, well, the three. He's got to get to the three. Yeah, and that from the three right. to the four is a real problem because the six yeah. takes the, the easy pocket away for the four. This is this is far from easy. Yeah, I could I could run the one and two here, but I don't know about getting to the three. It is definitely not a Cosmo. This will test the world champion. Oh, he looked a little bit shaky there with that stroke. Yeah, between the six and the four, nicely onto the three, but this is going to be the big shot right here. And he's got an angle on the three to take the cue ball towards that four. Can he? I know he's looking at it. Can he cut this ball in and fall? Oh, oh, this ball. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He did get funny. Now, but he still has to cut the ball in, and he did it. No, he'll take that. 
sure he he'll will. take that in a New York minute. Might not have been the planned path to the victory line, but a friendly touch on that four has just availed it to the corner pocket. Yeah, he's going to get position if he packets this one. Well, this was no easy finish when he came to the table. And he's made it look easy. So far. So far. Well, I think it's fair to say, Danny, that he's done the hard work. Well, seven to the eight isn't automatic yet. Well, he drew the ball a little, and he didn't miss <laughs> Q. And he's got a good angle. He's going to go two rails under the nine. Get as close as he can to that eight. There it is. But don't hit the nine. Oh, he didn't want to hit the nine because that, you know, he would have been a lot closer, but I'm, I'm sure he's okay. A little careless there, though. A little bit. You and got he's got to draw the ball here and hit it firm again. Yeah. Wow. He played it differently, Jay. Yeah, yeah. He, he played it differently. He killed yeah. Whitey. Yeah, yeah, but instead of hitting that with a bit more bottom and coming to the other side of the table, he played it safe and left distance. And got the nine anyway. A very important rack for Elcano. 3-2, he trails Shane Van Boney, but he's got the break in rack six. Yeah, I'm no, no guarantee that Ronnie would have played that eight a little different, but we'll never know. With 3-2 here on center court. Just to let you know, a few more of the sponsors involved in this year's Open. We want to thank Sam Syracuse, the Bar Q, the Spider Laser Trainer, obviously, Simonis 860 Cloth. Simonis Cloth, the best. They just keep supplying these players with the perfect playing conditions and the Aramith Billiard balls from Belgium. The Pro Cup TV balls in use here. And you're nine ball tour your canadian uh, danny you i was that already i was waiting no i was oh. waiting for you the canadian okay. nine ball tour that's right we're affiliated with the u.s open this year and our presenting sponsors cineplex entertainment chapters indigo bookstores a fine tour eight, by a fine eight events. person and in a beautiful country canada a little chilly in the winter but uh wear an we, overcoat we, we like it up there we say it's a dry cold yeah <laughs> yeah, well, so they say about Vegas, it's it's a dry heat. Yeah, but you you die out in the desert. Rack number six. And is it his turn to come up dry on the break? Well, and a bank left for Shane Van Boning here. Bank on the one. That automatically has position, so that makes the bank a little easy. Since the bank, you're going to have the two in the side. And you know about my electric chair bank, don't you, Jay? No, I do not. If someone said, put up a bank, and if you miss it, you're going to the electric chair, this might be the one I put up. I'm betting he gets this, too. Yeah. But he looks like he's ready to fire it. I like rolling it in. It makes the pocket a little bit bigger. Well, it didn't hurt him none. Played it perfectly. Perfect. Actually used the seven to hold position on the two. He might have been trying to knock the seven into a better spot also. It was free. You know, it didn't hurt anything. He's got the perfect angle for the angle. Alex to draw straight back for the three to the same pocket. And I can't see any obstacles. Not at all. Not at all. Connect the dots. I wonder who first said that, connect the dots. Pool players are pretty witty. I think you did, Danny. Oh, uh, well, I didn't. I didn't. Not at all. But I think the first time I heard it was from your lips. 
Well, you're going to give me credit for that? I wasn't trying to lead to that. I don't think I'm the first one that said it because I heard it from somebody. Well, whoever that was, they said they heard it from you too. I can't take it when people agree with me. I'd rather have them <laughs> argue. I mean, I'm feisty. I don't want to hear agreeing with me. I can't get into this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have that in snooker. You don't have connected dots in snooker, do you? Well, I only ever heard it when I started commentating on pool. And, and to be honest with you, I can't remember the first time I heard it. Well, I know where the first time I heard wipe, the, wipe his feet was. <laughs> it was coming in from the rain. <laughs> well, Shane's in good shape here. Got angle on the six. He should be able to draw that cue ball and get over the other side of the table for the seven next. Oh. Uh-oh. Costly error. You're only one game ahead, and you can't be giving uh, this guy a chance to get loose. But where, where does he play the six? Does he roll it in softly and take a cut? But I don't know. He can't be shooting this hard. It doesn't pass the seven. I think he's got to roll it soft and play for a bank uh, on the seven cross side. No matter what, I know he's got to be happy that uh, Shane missed because if he made that, it was that saying, Katie barred a door, whatever that means, but you know the saying too. Maybe he can shoot it soft enough. Stay he there might for the be seven. able to roll it in. I don't think he wants to roll it that slow, though. Yeah, but I don't think you can hit it hard. It has a sharp angle. Wow, well, he, he made a liar out of me. Sharp angle or not, he pounded yeah. it in. But they're they're applauding. But he didn't get to where he needed to be on the seven. Yeah, well, he's going to try and knock this down the corner pocket. But this is very missable. I'll bet you a glass of wine he runs out. No, I've, <laughs> I've, <laughs> you already I've, you already offered one free. I, what am I nuts? Yeah, but you know, I'd rather I'd rather be buying than losing one. It's yeah, a you know it's, it's a morale it's, thing. You're right. You're right. You're right. If I lost a bet, I was going to say we're even. You don't have to buy me one. I think he's ready, even after that miscue. You know, he he made a great shot before that miscue. And he has forgotten all about that. And secures the nine. And we're right back where we started. Three, three, six racks in the books and nothing between these two. The race to 13 heating up. And the match hasn't really gotten any flow yet. There's been some <laughs> unforced errors. Couple misses from both sides. And I think the players have, have just now started to settle in. The card girl's flowing. She's flowing. Rack number seven in Elcano. Looking to try and get his nose in front in this match. He'll need a good break. He's still on the left-hand side as we look. A little harder, and the cue ball almost found a path into that top corner. The well, one into the side. He almost made the nine in the break. I see that. That's as well, close as I've seen it come. I'll tell you what. He can play it right now, and I think it's free. You know, he didn't get a good shot on the two, but he can cut this two to here and go one rail at the nine. I think it's totally free. What do you think? I like it. Yeah. Got to like take it. it. Got I'll a big pocket with the three there, too. I'll well, I don't think one. he's going to bank it all the way and, and gamble on that. Just fan it and go to the nine. Well, he made a layer out of me, and he took advantage of the... Uh, three near the pocket and I don't even think he was thinking about the nine he just wanted to make that bank I hope he comes to Louisville because uh, you know we have nine ball bank pool in one pocket it'll be interesting to watch guys like Alcano play other games oh he's planning on being there 
I know he is. Now, Jay, he owned a, a tour up in the Northeast there. Was it the Joss Tour? The the yeah, because, I mean, he played in a lot of the events up there, and, I mean, he just dominated. Two years ago. Yeah. yeah. So he's no stranger to North American soil. I think he retired Ginky. <laughs> he beat Ginky about four or five times in a row, and Ginky decided to become a poker player. <laughs> yeah, well, Ginky was a good player, and he had an illness. We're talking about a player in the Boston area. What's his real name? We call him Ginky. But George Sansucci. George Sansucci. Well, he got a little funny here. Yeah. He did get a little thin, but he can play a two-way shot if he wants. Or is he playing the combination? He's playing the combination right away. And he's I looking believe. at the nine here. Yeah. And no he problem. gets it. And Elcano back in front by the odd rack. 4-3 leads Shane Van Boning. George Sansusi, real great player, but he had an illness and he slipped a little bit, but Ginky. I wouldn't let people call me Ginky for too long. <laughs> what a name that is. Ginky, you go your whole life and they're calling you Ginky? It was a childhood name. Yeah. I would never call him that. I no. always called him George. I did too. I thought it was a demeaning name myself. Yeah, definitely. He was a great player. Well, if nothing else, Ronnie Elcano has already won as many racks against Shane Van Boning because he won the last time they played. Yeah, this is this is a good. And with the break, rack number eight, the race to 13, the final of the 32nd U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. The he owns two world titles, the eight ball and the nine ball, and. If he wins this, we'll call it the Ronnie Slam. Well, he made two balls and he doesn't have a shot. How much of the two can he hit? The reason I'm saying that is, well, he can't hit it full. If he could hit it full, he could shoot and sort of stick and use the nine to snooker three quarters of the table. But I don't think he can get in there like that. If he can, that is the shot. Shoot it straight on, stick, the two will go three rails, and you can use the nine to cover a whole bunch of that table. Let's, let's see what he does. I don't know if he can get in there to hit it full, first of all. He just wants to have a look from the other side. This is almost like a golfer just circling the cup, just wanting to get a look from the back end of the cup, and he just wants to be sure in his mind exactly how to play this two safe. Well, he apparently couldn't get in there, so he used the eight to get him with, and he didn't. Don't applaud yet. This could have been a mistake. Although there's distance, and getting to the three is going to be awful tough if he elects to shoot the ball. You can I see the edge of the ball. That's it? Yeah. I'm not sure of that, and this... This uh, screen, we, it looks like he can hit that a lot fuller than you think. But the whole thing, even if he could make it, you're going into the seven, and you're only guaranteed having another long shot. Well, that camera angle tells us nothing as to whether or not he's got enough of this, too, to be able to try and knock it into that top corner. But he's queuing at it. I think he can. He's going to run into the... Uh, the seven for sure. Well, this is a low percentage shot here. It is. Well, this will tell you how he's feeling right now about this game. He had the shot, but he overcut it a little bit, and it's going to be disaster. It's going to be disaster. He left the two just as good as you can to go to the three. Well, there's definitely a shift in momentum in this match right now. Yeah, Shane was 3-1 ahead at one point. So this is three in a row for Alcano and counting. And he's got no problem balls confronting him now either. It's going to be perfect. This is going to be perfect. 
come back a little, get straight in on the seven, straight in on the eight, straight in on the nine. He did that part okay. And Shane in the unfriendliest seat in the house right now. You know, he's played so well all week. We saw arguably the best match we've ever seen, certainly I've ever seen in the U.S. Open, when he demolished El Cano, 11-4. He shot about 990, 991, I was told. Oh, my God. Exactly. I mean, it's almost That's perfect. tremendous. But El Cano is coming back at him and coming back with a vengeance. That's four in a row now to El Cano and a 5-3 lead. This is unfamiliar territory this week for Shane. He hasn't had to play from behind yet. Well, you know the bad part of all this. Such, you gotta have stamina to play seven days, first of all, and being stroked the whole seven days, because one bad day and you're eliminated. Uh, it's a shame someone has to lose because they both played so well, but someone has to lose. Well, Ronnie has just left the arena just taking a time out, and that'll give everyone a chance to just kind of move a bit in their chairs, get comfortable, because we might be in for a long evening here. Well, welcome back, folks. Ronnie Elcano has just made his way back to the main arena, the Chalk Off Arena here. And someone's going to have to get on the house mic and settle everybody down. Half the seats are empty, and you know a lot of these people probably bolted out for either a cigarette or a washroom no. break, the same as El Cano. And There's a big line for drinks over there or, also. Or the beer, yeah, the beer line. But at any rate, they're all buzzing, and now we need to stop. Yeah, and El Cano wants to take a little time. Jerry Cockrell is just going to put the chameleon rack back to the balls, re-rack everything, buy a little more time for El Cano and let everybody settle back into this match. Because I think... In my opinion, I think we need a change of socks because we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> Where uh, did I come up with that? It's my craziness going to you? I mean, I'm, you know, I want you. That's you worse know. than the oyster statement. <laughs> I want you to let me know who thought about changing their socks. I need a pillow. You can have socks. <laughs> Jay needs a pillow. Jay well, you fell asleep well, the other day without a pillow. <laughs> I, you, I think you could do it. Let the folks at home know Jay was here doing the Suke and Gallego match till almost 5 a.m. 4.30. 4.30. thirty this morning. Yeah, but you're a pool player, and you've spent many nights up all night with action. I know that. Okay, here we go. Rack number eight. Elcano with the break. 5-3 is lead. And he didn't pull it to the side cushion that time. And I don't think anything no, found gravity. No, and you know what? It might have stopped straight in the corner, but how do you get close to the two without fouling the ball? It's going to be awful tough to hit the cue ball high on this shot legally. He might have to draw it back because that will assure him of not fouling. But he's going to have a long shot anyway. It looks like it might be straight in. Yeah, he can, he can stroke this a little bit, Danny. He'll go forward. You, you know, think so? Or, yeah, I think oh. he can go forward a foot or two. Tough shot. Shane's got a, he's got a good little stroke here yeah, on well, shots like this. Got to have a good touch here because very easy to go through it and push it, which he didn't. He had a little angle, that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. all right. Straight on, it would have been a difference. That seven ball is hanging on the lips, on the jaws of that side pocket. It almost looks like it could fall in. Well, we have a 4-8 combination. Something funny can happen there, but other than that, I can't see anything bad happening. But he still has to get the three and fall on that combination. He leads himself the long three into the top right. He's got to get back down. He got an ideal position, you know, just go three rails to the left and catch that short side rail. But the four isn't available, it so it's gonna it's gonna be the four eight combination. Yeah. And he doesn't yeah, want that yeah, cue ball yeah. on the side cushion. You mean well he's got he's got room to cue it, but now you gotta control the uh pink four ball also. You know, it's not straight on, so I don't think the ball's just gonna stay there. It's gonna bounce. But you know what might happen? 
he might double kiss it. When that ball hits the eight, mm -hmm. the cue ball will be coming that direction, and it might hit the four again, and he'll have the four in that pocket. He doesn't have the ideal angle for this. No, for no, this I'm telling you, he, he's yeah. going to go forward and hit that ball again. Unless he jacks up and draws it. I don't know you why know he would do that. Danny, your years of experience are benefit you here because I don't think he sees that. See, what he's trying no. to do is jack up to avoid it. Oh, yeah, but oh, if he just rolls it, he's going to hit it twice. See, he hit it twice, yeah. and he didn't control it. If he had belief in it, but he did get a shot, I believe. But if he had belief in what I was saying, he, he could have it He could have leveled on right. it and hit it slower, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But that's not in his repertoire yet. Right, exactly. But when he gets this DVD and hears me, he might say, hmm, that's possible. And the way he practices, he'll go practice. He'll put it up. Yeah, he will too. Well, that's how I learned. You know, I went to Johnson City, and that was like going to college, every top all around player in the world. And if you didn't learn going there, then you're a moron. Tough little shot here. Well, position is pretty automatic. He overcut it, but he made it. If he didn't hit the nine, he would have been perfect, but he did hit the nine, so I'm sure he's going to not play safe. He wants to shoot. And he's looking at a possible billiard, too. Yeah. That's his best bet here, because he can bank the five over towards the other corner and make the seven. No, I don't know, guys. If you hit the seven too thin, you can go behind the nine. He's playing the seven. Yeah, you had it soft. Oh, Draw you it fairly be careful. soft. Just like that. Yeah. He's Play. working hard this rack. Yeah, he used a death touch there. Just feathered that seven into that side pocket. And he oh. knew he had to play it at a speed to try and leave that five ball over the corner. He has it. He has it. He's working hard this rack. And you know it's a rack he really needs to win. He doesn't want to get down three games. No problem, and he's not going to need the bridge here. He's got one, a pretty good open look. One at more that good pocket. shot, though. Going to take one more good shot on this one. But he's facing the pocket full, so he he has a big pocket here. You know, he's directly diagonal to it. He's got a big pocket, and you don't have to do anything to get to the nine, which makes pocketing the ball a little bit easier. If you can ever call these pockets big. Nice yeah. shot. Nice shot. He needed that one. And Shane Van Boning stops the four rack onslaught from El Cano and finally gets to move a beat over. It's still a 5-4 lead to the world champion, but Van Boning with the break in rack number 10. Yeah, that was a vital rack. He really couldn't afford to lose that one, too. I think if Alcano would have gone three clear, he might well have got his tail up. And Shane has to keep him in his, he in his sights. Yeah, that was a big game. And if you're faint of heart, you might not have made that six ball. The break, rack number 10, 5-4, Alcano's lead. If the one goes, he might not like it. Well, oh, look where the two is. He'll he be happy. Two. He'll yeah. be very happy yeah. with that. I thought, well, he's lucky it went in because he would have been snookered, but he's playing so well, we can't use lucky. He doesn't have a gimme here. You know, he is eight feet away. Now that, to coin a baseball phrase, Danny's got to dial eight on this one. And a good positional shot needed. Well, if he makes it, I think the cue ball is going the right direction towards the three. Maybe a little wide. He might want to go two rails to it, which would have to hit the cue ball a little lower. One rail isn't going natural path. He might have to jack up a little and hit center and go two cushions. But whatever he does, 
Yeah, he's Don't drawing miss. the ball a little bit. Yeah, he's hitting it low. He's going to go two, two cushions to that ball. There it is. Looks good. Watch out. Better slow down. Yeah, perfect. Great open yeah. shot. Deserves applause for that. And nicely onto the three. You know, I don't think anybody prepares any better than Shane Van Boning right now in the sport. And what's that saying? Chance favors the prepared man? Chance is a fool's word for fate. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't you. have a third for that. No two <laughs> comments. <laughs> I was waiting for you. Don't look, for, don't look at me on that one. <laughs> I thought it sounded good, though, didn't it? <laughs> you sounded so wise, Danny. Then you gave <laughs> it away. Shane has sped up his play, too. I think he's getting himself into stroke here. And he might well have found another gear. Two in a row to Van Boning. Now with 10 racks in the books, nothing between these two stars. A race to six for all the cheese. Race to eight. Oh, race to eight, that's right. 13 now, race to eight. Race to 13, yeah. I'm glad you guys are here. Hey, Danny, do you ever find that you're watching a match and you see a situation come up and you know the player doesn't see the shot and you know it's there? You know, like... A hundred times yeah, at least. Yeah. You know. Do you ever feel like going down and telling them after? Look at this. Boy. Here you can see the numbers. Oh, beautiful. Elkano with a decided edge. And you then know, Boning will have to close that gap and likely... And be, you look at that, it'd be surprising that the score is 5-5. Five, five. I want to answer Jay's question about that. Do I ever... I tell him later. Yeah, I That's really I do. Yeah. Rack number if you 11. like him. I tell him if I don't like <laughs> him, because I like knowledge to go out there, you know. This is a great game, and I, I know that if people get better, they're going to be better customers and better fans. But it all has to do with knowledge. Somebody has to instill the knowledge for them to appreciate it. The, the, the game is so difficult that the ordinary man on his own, he, he can't appreciate what's going on. But there's a lot more to it, and I like to bring that to him if I can. I know it's appreciated by everybody that you work with. A little unlucky here for Shane. Yeah. The cue Not ball yet. in the one. Well, like I tell Billy all the time. Not yet. Because he, he's a, uh, is he trying to make this off the rail or just kicking it away? That's the answer. How about that? Nice safety. And then he's left the long one for Alcano. Yes, he has. He hit it pretty good. Almost controlled it behind the six, but well, almost doesn't count in pool. There's a narrow pathway, a little window right there between the six and the seven for Alcano. I like to call it field goal position. Slots that in and leaves the four into the side pocket. You make it sound easy. Make it sound easy. This is not easy, you know, but you're going towards the five, but if you got bad speed, you can go behind the seven, too. You, got, you either got to get up and draw the cue ball into the side rail or roll it and go towards the seven. He did what I said first. And look how nice he drew it. He not only drew it, he put a little left-hand English so that when it hit the rail, it went towards the five. You know, I think the only error he's made so far in this match is that miscue. Well, there were two of them. Two miscues. Oh, okay. That's right. Well, no. Six now. A little tougher, but... Again, the angle to bring the cue ball back up for the seven, and he want to make sure he's got a nice angle on that seven because that eight isn't quite as open as he'd like it to be. He wants to get straight in on the seven in the same pocket. That's perfect. It's pretty good. That's perfect. He can, he can thump this in yeah. and get yeah. the cue ball anywhere on the bottom half of the table that he wants it. 
Yeah, he played for the, good. the bigger space. Well, the fact that Shane caught up to him didn't hurt his uh, stroke. Uh, stays in front. Alcano, 6'5". The race to 13 for one of the most coveted titles in the world of pool. And the fans are loving it, you know, and after 32 years of seeing the top players, they're pretty knowledgeable here in Norfolk. I went on record, Jay, as saying that I felt this tournament was the toughest tournament in the world to win because with the World Championships, you have to qualify, and you're no guarantee yeah. of getting the best players. In the U.S. Open, a come one, come all. Yeah, put your money up, and you're in the tournament. Okay, no, just waiting for the rack. The chameleon rack. Sponsored rack here of the 32nd U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. And he looks very calm in his chair. That's one thing that is very consistent with most Asians, actually, the Filipinos, but certainly the players from Chinese Taipei, the Japanese. Not very animated. Well, Not very, they, they know, rarely show emotion. They're very relaxed, and they love the game, and all he wants to do is rack the ball so he can get up and hit him again. That's all he's thinking of. Rack number 12, 6-5, Elkanos leads oh, right straight in the into drink. the side pocket, and, look at, and, and look at the, the nine. nine. No, he oh. didn't. Wow. And, you, you know, well, it's a good thing the seven's in the way. Well, it's a good thing he's got cue ball in hand because the two looks like it may it's have to be developed. It's the, uh, that's the eight ball in the way. If the eight yeah. wasn't there, he could shoot a combination right now because the two is not sitting real easy, but he certainly with ball in hand can do something about that. Now, from the right area, that two will pass to the same pocket that is near the nine. I don't know if he, I think he'd like to hit him right now because when he, if he gets perfect on the two to pocket it, he's going to hit that five ball and it might get in the way of the four. So he's looking to want to hit him right now, I believe. Well, ball in hand. He'll take time and weigh out the options. He still looks like he has an angle to go into the balls. So he must not like just cutting that two ball in that corner pocket. But he hasn't decided yet. He might do something else yet. Oh, get it? See? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, he did. Now he might be playing for the cut on the two. Yeah, it looks like the two will pass and he can shoot it. Well, he's getting a little too thin for that now, it looks like. I don't know. We're not going to know until he shoots what he's thinking. No, I think he's playing position for the two ball. Shoot the two in the side. No, he, he tried to hit him, and that could be fatal. <laughs> Although he's cut these in like they're nothing. Well, the five moved out there and made it a little harder for him to get on the three ball next. Yeah, made it a lot harder. That was the first thing he did after making that one is he just identified that five as coming into play to make life difficult. You mean you think he has to make the two? Yeah. That's I think he'd like to make the two. He, but making the two and controlling to the three is a tall order, so. But you got to be careful with that nine over there if you try to play a safe. Oh, he won't play a safe. Okay, what's what's the prediction? He's going to cut it in and try to fall on the three, right? Yeah. Okay. Fall, come about the middle of the table, go go across the table, come back to about the middle of the table, and take his medicine with a little bit of a tough cut shot on the three. Well. Yeah, 
yeah, if he can get right about in, yeah, into this area, you know, just anywhere along the line here, That's he'll a be big fine. Area. He'll leave the three available. Look like you the drew an oyster. <laughs> 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 okay, let's. Danny, I, you got oysters on the brain tonight, man. I, I love I seafood. Think. Yeah, he's a little short. Well, he had to. But be. he's well, well, he's well inside that line. But that was the area he had to get to he to made, leave the three. But this sure. is gonna, this is going to be a good shot too. And he knows the cue ball is going into the four. The, now from the overhead camera, this it just looks very dangerous. The shot. So he's got to be careful. Well, it looks like if he rolls the three in, he'll hit the edge of the four, and he'll leave himself a shot at the four in the same corner pocket. Of course, he'd like to be about a foot closer to the three to shoot this shot. Guys. Rolling it and hitting the four, you can go right inside also. So I don't know if he's going to do that. I don't think he wants to hit the four at all. I don't know if he has a choice, Danny. Well, let's see. Let's see. It's a tricky shot at any rate. If you roll forward and hit the four, you might go inside. He's drawing the ball somehow. Well, he hit the four. He's better, than, he's better than all three of us. Great <laughs> shot from Ben Boning there. The fact that he had to roll that, I think, is what increased the degree of difficulty. But he cleared everything. Now the rack's wide open. And no reason, no reason why Shane can't get back to 6'6". Six, six. I'll tell you what, this guy negotiates tough racks as good as anybody alive. Yeah, that's a pretty good shot, too. Twenty-four years of age, he's got a great head for the game, doesn't he? To be able to see the patterns, you know, it's a lot of players with experience. You know, they've got to get around and see all the great players for years to be able to learn what it appears that Shane Van Boning has already taken in at such a tender age. They ought to applaud that shot. He shot so soft, and the cue ball went much further than I thought he would. That's a sign of a real good stroke. Jimmy, I want to let you know that this is a kid that started from infancy, though. I mean, he was playing on a pool table when he was four and five years old. Okay, what are you saying? That anyone who starts at four and five can get to play this well? <laughs> is that what you're saying? No. Seniority doesn't do it. It's, it's interesting, though. Many of the great players, Danny, did start very young, though. Yep. The Miseracs and Hopkins. Yeah. De Libertos. Yeah, I started. <laughs> Nine <laughs> down. <laughs> And 6-6, six, six. as I said, they're going hand in hand through the ranks here in the 32nd U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. Van Boning and El Cano treating us to a feast. You know, Danny, you were kind of an exception to the rule. Most yeah. top pool players started at, when they were very young, before 10 years old. You were just a great all-around athlete. I know you were a championship bowler, a baseball player. A you're, boxer. You're not getting my Bud Light. <laughs> you're not getting it. But I started really at, at 28 playing seriously. But at 17, I was making 500 a week in the local pool room. And I thought it was forever. And then after a while, and a long while, over a year and a half, I heard the word, you're barred. You know, we had ring games. Yeah. Anyway, Buffalo, New York. Rack number 13. And the cue ball. Look out. Lost. It's not you a lucky know. number 13 for Shane. Look at this. The worst thing you can do in a big tournament with top players in the world is to make that cue ball on the break because you're almost certain to lose that game. Yeah, at this level, it'll always be costly. And the real problem ball the only problem ball that I can see is the pink four. It's below the six and the nine. But with ball in hand, he knows he's going to be able to leave himself the perfect angle on the three to be able to get to that four. So Oi. roll forward. You know, that's This is going to cost Shane the ultimate. Yeah, roll forward. Perfect angle on the three to go to the four. Well, the six is a little tricky, too, though. You might have to play a combination. Might have to play the six, eight. Get this back out to the middle of the table. 
He's overhit this. Well, not too bad. It kind yeah. of slowed down going up table there. It did. It looked like it was going uphill. He's playing for the combination, which was logical. And the thing about where he got, if they happen to both go in, he's still going to have position for the nine. And they can both go in. Well, I think he'll be slow rolling this. Well, he oh, will. No, actually, he's queuing up like he's going to hit it. He hits it full. They're going in, both of them. Yeah, he queued up. He did. He probably played that. Yeah, well, that's why I said play position for the nine. And it was a costly scratch from Van Boning. <laughs> Ronnie Elcano, 7-6. Have you two noticed that the racks that Ronnie is winning look like easy racks, and the racks that Shane's winning looks like they're all difficult journeys? You're right. He's working harder. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I like to say about those kind of racks? My opponent looks like he's got a Cosmo, and when I shoot, it looks like a jigsaw puzzle. And that's what happens when you're struggling usually, but neither one of these players are struggling. I mean, they're solid, solid for a final match. They're playing solid. Yeah, I think they're just falling a little tougher for Shane. On the left, yep. Greg Sullivan and Mark Griffin on the right, the principals in Diamond Billiard Products, and we thank them very much for supplying us with the best pool table. Best pool table in the world for my money. And there's the numbers. Elcano with a huge edge in the pro rating, even though he's only one rack in front of Van Boning, but a dry break, and that one rack could be erased here real quick. Yeah. It, this is almost like uh, you made the cue ball in a pocket. You could, you wouldn't have put it hardly any different ball in hand, right? Yeah, everything's out there. No balls tied up. No balls against the rail. The three to the four, I think, is the only chance for something to go astray. And he's going to have to figure it out. Where does he want to get on the three? I like this kind of angle on the three. You know, if he can make the two and get this angle, he can eventually shoot the three in here and go one, two to over here somewhere. Yeah. That looks like the logical path. Well, you got to get good position on the seven ball when he gets to that point in the rack, but the six is in a perfect spot for him to use it as a position ball for the seven. The Luckily six is also in a, uh, you know, for the, the shot that you just diagrammed, Danny, the six is a danger ball in getting back for the four that You're way. You're right. Going that angle, uh, he's going to path to go to the uh well, He's the left pocket. that angle, so. He's going my route. He only has to worry about going. Past the six. That, no, going in that corner pocket. He's going to miss the six. It's just. You got to be careful because he's trying to miss the six. If the six weren't there, he'd go short into the side rail. But because of the six, he's got to go longer, and that's dangerous. I he don't think he will. I think he's just going to go two rails yeah. out of there, go up towards the five ball. Yeah, keep it simple. Oh, yeah. okay. Because he's pretty thin. He can, he can get by the seven and eight, I guess. Well, now he's. Yeah, I think that the smart way to go is just two rails and go up table. Okay, let's see if he has that. Yeah, kind of like he that. He did that. He did that. You guys were right. That took away the danger of going in well, this corner pocket. He went farther than he wanted, though. He would have liked to stop about two feet sooner. You know, if he did, he would have had an easier cut. And now the cut means he still has work to do. This is what you guys were saying. It looks like Alcano has a connected dots. Well, he made this rack harder on himself. Yeah. Well, he's going to probably pocket this ball, but uh, getting to the next ball is a little different. Well, he's going to have to probably go up and go around the five and shoot the five in the uh, left corner here. I don't think he can stop to shoot the five in the side. Well, he's having a long think about this. Well, it's an important match, most important of his life. A very thin cut, using the bridge. He'll go to the 
right rail, the end rail. Here, I'll show you. We can do this. Yeah, he's got to go off the ball, cue ball here, and up behind the five like this. I think that's the only way he can play this. Nice shot, Jay. Nice shot. He's taking a lot of time with it, though. Well, he was looking at the screen up there and seeing what Jay is going to mark. Then he's going to try to follow it. <laughs> and it did mark up there. You does know. it really? Yeah. I never noticed oh, that. Oh, it does. It does. Oh, there are actually people sitting over there watching that screen. Sure. Perfect view there. Well, I just got here, you know. Well, I've been saying it all week. Anytime they're confused and we're going to show them something, they could look up there and get help. Well, you Watch hard. out. You overcut it. Watch look, out. Look, 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 Watch look, look. out. Uh-oh. It's going to be tough mentally to overcome that one. Because Just watching him on that. You know something? It was almost like he hadn't, uh, the shot, he hadn't really committed to the shot. He backed away from it twice. He changed his mind, Jimmy. Because at first it looked like he was going to hit it with right English and go around. What he did is he tried, he used inside Tr English. Tried to check it a bit and yeah. go yeah. down the middle of the table. But it, he just looked like he succumbed to the shot to me, Jay. Yeah. It was tough and he never looked comfortable queuing at it with the rake. No problems now. Get straight in on this six and the other side. But you know, the point that you alluded to, again, he, I mean, he made it tough on himself, but the balls were just sitting awkward and it was... Not the type of rack that he could come out and, and get that back arm going again. Ronnie Elcano, once again, with a chance to go two racks clear. And you can't see anything stopping him. Yeah, this could be fatal for uh, Shane at this moment of the game because, you know, we're getting near the end now and he's going to be two games behind suddenly. Look at that control. But I think he's got to roll it inside and shoot the nine in the pocket that he's near. I don't think he could just stop it. I think he's got to roll past it and shoot the nine. And oh, he, he could. Wrong again. It looked like he had an angle. And it's going to be a two-rack cushion for Elcano. 8-6. He still wants five more to get the U.S. Open crown and take it back to the Philippines. Just looks a lot more comfortable right now. Shane is uh, pressing a little bit. You know, Ronnie, you notice Ronnie doesn't waste any time when he comes to the table. He sees the shot, he gets down, and he shoots it. Well, one thing's for certain. He hasn't run into the same Shane Van Boning that he ran into yesterday. That was a buzzsaw yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, well, in I interviewed Shane after that match, and uh, not very often you'll get a player that says, yeah, yeah, I've, I've played real good. You know, I mean, Shane... <laughs> He was happy with the way he played yesterday, and I think Elcano knew that he had seen the best. He had taken the best that Shane had to offer, so it was never going to get any worse. Well, when I get to this point, I start doing the math. He's got to beat me 7-4 to four now to win. Rack Just number 15, 8-6. I don't think anything's going in, and no. I think Shane's going to have a shot. Yes. Let's see. Nothing I think he can shoot that one ball. Yeah, he could. And neither player really figuring out the break to this point. We're 15 racks now into the match. And still, that problem hasn't been solved. Been no continuity, no flow in this match. Players haven't been able to string racks together. Well, the key here is to get from the one to the two right now. Oh, you're lucky he didn't hit that ball, but he's liable to go behind the seven if he's not no, careful. He's okay. He's yeah, okay. He's fine. Four to the five could be a little problem. See, the difference, in Shane, the difference in Shane's game tonight and last night is he's taken a lot longer to analyze shots. He was really in the flow last night. Even, Jimmy, even though he had hard shots, he wasn't wasting any time. What do they call it, Danny? Analysis paralysis? 
No, <laughs> paralysis <laughs> by analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what happened on that last rack, I'm telling you, he spent way too much time thinking oh, about I'm, that shot. Listen, I agree. When you start slowing down, you're not in rhythm, you're not going to get in rhythm, and you're not going to look in rhythm, and you're going to play a little worse. I like getting up and shooting. You know, It doesn't take that long to figure out what you're going to do. And he's missed it. Oh, oh boy. He almost yeah. missed yeah, it. Yeah, he hit that thick, and he knows it. Well, he's going to bank the four. And this doesn't afford an easy positional path to the five. Was well, he really playing position for the bank, or was he trying to come I back across know. the table? I, he might have been trying to hit the nine and not get out of the way of that ball. But now he can go two rails if he, bank, nice if he bank. banks the ball. Nice bank. He, he don't want to hit it. I Does it pass the nine? Yeah. Well, up in the corner. Up in the corner, yeah. One more rack. He's just struggling with it. You're He's right. They're not easy. See, I don't like taking this long. I think you're hurting yourself. Well, remember how he played last night? He was just such a casual pace. He was so relaxed. He was, uh, he was really in the flow. Now he doesn't have any kind of pace to him. Guys, this is $50,000 and a lot of prestige. You know, uh, if he wins this, he's like a shoe in to be in the Moscone Cup representing the United States. That's another 20000 So this is a $70,000 yeah, match yeah. for him. Yeah. And how about... Just want to hit the seven. Oh, he's all Good right. Shot. Great shot from Van Poning there. Boy, he came with one. He needed it. One other little plus here, if he wins the tournament. What do you think it is? Free entry for Free the rest entry of his forever. life. Can you imagine at 24 That's years big. old? That could be fifteen or $20,000. Yeah, he can break Barry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he won't break Barry. Avoiding oh, the eight. Oh, man, that was close. Well, he's starting to let his cue arm go, yeah. though. That's a sign. To me, that's a sign he's starting to feel a little more comfortable. Yeah, he put a good hit on that ball. Nicely done. Yeah, cheated the pocket. That's what he wanted to do. And he's got the angle on the eight to bring the cue ball down for the nine. You know, I'm still having trouble picking the winner or even pulling for either one. I'm not pulling for either one as of yet. But I'll tell you something funny after he makes this. And that confirms an 8-7 score. And the crowd trying to will Van Boning on. He's one rack adrift, but with the break to come in rack 18. You know what I like to say to find out who I favor? I know it's crazy, the rowboat thing. You're in a rowboat in rough seas, and there's one guy on the right side in the water getting taken by the current. One on the left, you only got one life preserver. Who would you throw it to, Shane or Ronaldo? And that's who you prefer to win the match. Is that great logic? Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> My rowboat principle. I'm Corey Duell taking a bow here. I'm going to keep the life preserver just in case the rowboat springs a leak. <laughs> you can let them both drown. <laughs> I got to let them go. Well, Sorry. Rack 16. 8-7 in favor of Elcano. Wing ball down. Cue ball's been kicked. But has it been be a friendly right. kick? Oh, no. No. Well, I think it passes... Uh, the three? The three. And that might be the only shot he's got. Unless... Well, he has another trick shot. But I don't think at this stage of life you want to play a trick shot. You mean he, like off the nine ball? Off the nine. And, I don't and like just that stop shot. there. You know... But, He's shooting it. He's shooting it past the three. Yeah. What's easier? You're gonna have to play position if you make this, which he did. Did you notice how quickly he shot that shot? That was a harder shot than some of the ones he'd been studying before. That's what it, I'm saying. Yeah, into a blind pocket yeah. too. Get up and shoot. Don't yeah, you stall. Don't want, you're right. He's letting his stroke out right yeah. now. I think you're seeing a different Van Boning right now. I think he's decided that he's got to grab this one and run away with it. Quit the stall. Run out quick, and you're going to play better. And he's got the game to do it, too. Oh, sure. But he's not stalling anymore. He talked himself into playing a different pace, and that's big. Yeah. 
he knew he was doing something wrong. That's pretty strong. He coached himself. He did. Well, he's been coaching himself, I told you. He plays in South Dakota and practices, coaches himself. That's his quickest rack yet, right there. And a real boost of confidence and adrenaline for Van Boning, 8-8. Eight, eight. Effectively now, a race to five for the title. Van Boning back. He's taken the last two racks. 8-8. Eight, eight. I'm not too sure what happened down there, but it got applause from everybody, and Shane was laughing. Anybody catch anything? Yeah, they were upset because the rack girl didn't come out with a score with the, with the rack number. <laughs> They were calling for her. So she got up and came out there. And she floated around the table. Gracefully. Well, she dogged it. She dogged it. She forgot to get up there. Rack number 17, 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> Van Boning has wrested the initiative away from El Cano. Looks like the six is going. Yeah, but he snookered. Listen to the crowd. You think the crowd's a bit partial here? I think they're telling you who they'd save if they had to jump out of the boat. Well, I know they're not all from South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> One guy is. But the last ball rolling went in, but our second last ball rolling, the last ball rolling snookered him onto one. And it's gonna be a push. Okay, here's the trick push. It's a little difficult, but the trick push here. Roll forward and try to try to leave an you know, act like you're trying to leave an edge to hit the one a little bit, not enough to make it, and then kick at it. He may kick at this ball. Who knows? Kick He's at it, and if you hit the downside of the one, the cue ball will go one rail towards the uh, three ball, and the one will go upstream. Because with, with good players, you better have a trick, or the push is not going to work. You think he's going to kick at this, Jay? I think He's so. thinking about it. He's thinking I about think so. playing safe right now, kicking yeah. off the ball. I mean, it couldn't be in a better spot for him to do that. The 886, the pro rating, so again... Be lying the score. The ratings haven't changed much. They've been about the same for about six so or seven. So he's going to see yeah. what, what he knows. Did he leave the edge of the one? If he did, that's a mistake. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to get into a chess match with, uh, with El Cano. Here's a guy that you know, probably spends hours around Reyes and Bustamante, well, uh, two of the master tacticians. Yeah, if he left the edge, it was a terrible shot because... Elcano can go upstream, but he passes it on. So whatever he had in mind, it better be good because you've got to have a plan when you push out. Well, I think what Ronnie doesn't like is if he comes off the edge of the one, the cue ball's going right towards the side pocket, too. He's well, I think it's going to glance. The speed he's going to hit it will be just enough to glance past it. Well, we'll find out shortly. That definitely is a danger, but I think with the speed you've got to hit it to go to the end rail, you'll glance a little more because... The harder you shoot, the wider you glance when you hit and cut a ball. So I think he's got that. I don't think he's worrying about the side pocket. Brush it and put it up straight down. Get it? And he could even hit it thinner. Not bad. I would have never gave him that shot back. I, I would have had to shoot from there. So the chess match you were talking about, apparently Alcano is not a chess player. They play checkers in the Philippines. Well, not Efren. Yeah. Efren Reyes is a real, real top chess player. He is a good chess player. That's true. But that was a mental error there. You never give the guy this easy a chance to do this to you. 
Uh, he's in a lot of trouble right now. He's seen yeah. his two rack advantage evaporate. And now he's got to come with a good kick. He can hit it off the end rail, use a little bit of inside English, just like that. Yeah, hit and hope. That's Shorten all you up got. the angle. Yeah, just hit it hard. Hit it hard, give it a chance to do something. Wow. He did something to his wallet now. Yeah, I never expected him to miss that. Well, you know, mentally he might have known he made a bad shot and uh, he was like, didn't like that this was what it became. This took kick. the words out of my mouth, Dan. I'm thinking, boy, you know, he's a little bit upset of himself for passing that shot. And then he had a mental lapse on his kick shot just now. Yeah. Golden opportunity for Shane to forge back into a one game lead. Now we're starting to get into the critical stage of the match. They're the playing a race gritty. to five. The nitty gritty. Thank okay, you. where did it come from? <laughs> no one's emailed. No, it came from the nitty gritty dirt band. <laughs> <laughs> With ball in hand. Well, he's stalling, he's and we're trying to we're trying to make a little comedy out of this, but uh, serious match, so we don't need much comedy. He was trying to bump that four ball out a little bit and just yeah. didn't do it. But you know, that's a good idea. Nothing to lose. And if you bump it, you might knock it in front of the side I because, you know, it's sitting not, not real good. What I don't like is he's going back into this slow pace. I know. I was just He doesn't that. have to. No, you're right. Get up, shoot the ball. You got an angle on it to go to the four. No problem here. He can go two rails forward or come back one rail. Just got to avoid the side pocket. He went forward and there was no side pocket. He had such a nice flow going for like the last two games and all of a sudden, look what he did now. He jacked himself up over the nine ball. He did. Yeah, he doesn't I like think he, I think he spent too much time when he had that ball in hand. You're right. I believe in getting up and shooting. Stay in rhythm. You were in rhythm exactly perfectly last rack now all of a sudden you slowed yourself down here's where you are last over the reps. top yeah you know and if he doesn't fall on the five properly uh he's not going to fall on the seven right well this is a tough shot to begin with jacked up oh what a shot what a shot. Is he going to get a, well, he did, but look at, he's on the wrong side of the ball now. I don't know if he could juice this and go to the seven, could he? Could he go forward with right hand English? Or is he going to have to swing around three cushions? He's going to have to go, if he takes this on, he's going to have to go all around the angles to get back to the seven. Don't hit the nine. So he's looking at the path that it's going to come off of the last rail. Yeah, the shot here, if he cuts that in, he plays into here with spin here here and back into this area that's the shot got to make sure the eight doesn't come into play when he goes oh he's played yeah. safe yeah. it must have been too thin yeah he not a bad must move. Have been, yeah, not bad at all <laughs> must have been a little too thin for him to take it on i don't think he can see this five you ball. know what i like about that is he took his medicine too i mean he made a great shot on the four i think you're right it was a, it was tempting to shoot and he actually played the best percentage shot Well, Ronnie just missed a kick shot, an easier kick shot than this. He missed the whole ball. Well, the natural angle isn't there, so he has to draw the ball a little bit to shorten the angle. But does the, uh, does the five pass the seven? And the reason I'm saying that, maybe with ball in hand, give it to him, and he may not be in this bad a spot the next kick. Oh, he's not going to give it to him. No, he's going to. He's got to. He's got to use a lot of inside English. He's got to load up to hit this ball. He hit it. He did. And look at this. Look at this shot. No gimme here. You know he can shoot the three if he wants to, but he's going to have to go four rails to get to the seven. It would be a crowd pleaser. You know what I'm talking about. I don't think he could just roll this ball, but if he shoots it with speed and cuts it in here and flies one, two, three, four to here. You're dreaming. I'm dreaming. That He's going to play safe. It, well, that's 
another choice. It depends on how he feels about making the three, but that's the path he would have to go. No, I don't think he's going to. Okay, we'll put it up later. I'll bet 50 that I get to the seven. Well, you could do it. Oh, please. Well, look, you know, it looks like he's yeah, shooting away. Yeah, yeah. Go well, ahead and fire it. It'll be a crowd pleaser. Let's go for real. He, nah. he didn't. He played nah. safe. No. Nah. Discretion. All right. I got one on you now. Yeah. I just pointed out a possible shot, you know. I, Danny, I don't think he feels comfortable enough to try a oh, shot well, like that right now. He did pretty good here, but how much can he hit of this ball? Well, if he can hit enough to use the seven as a stopper with the cue ball, he can just bank this up. And just use the nine and the eight exactly. for the snooker part. Exactly. And he's got the seven as kind of a buffer to keep the cue ball and guarantee himself a little distance between the white and the object ball. But this is a, a very important moment, key moment here in this match at 8-8. Like here they are, you know, jockeying safeties now. And it seems like the initiative rests with Shane. Well, you know, we started out a race to 13. Now they're playing a race to five. Yeah, yeah. and the pressure mounts. Mistakes are magnified now. He's gonna run into the seven and try to bank this behind the nine. He just did it. He did it. Wow. If it touches the nine, he leaves Shane a shot. Well, Jimmy White called that one. Didn't really have a lot of choices, though, no. Danny, in fairness. Will Shane jump this ball? Yeah. Yeah. He looked I at think he can get through it. to the edge of it. I think he can see the right-hand side of it as he looks. Well, he's got to go back and get his jump cue, then. He's not. He's looking like he's trying to shoot off the edge of the five and play another safety. Oh, dangerous, nope. dangerous, dangerous. But that's all he has. Unless he wants to jump over the top, but where are you going? You're not going to get position on the seven jumping over the top. Mike Massey could. <laughs> he wants to hit the edge of the ball. Could he be trying to corner bank this? Not make it, just play safe. Just like this. Watch Look out, out, point. Ooh, Ooh, this might be a it useful. It worked out great. This might be a useful it out great. point from the side pocket. Look at that. And he's smiling. That wasn't what he intended, but he'll gratefully accept it. You know, even if he doesn't hit the point, he wasn't giving up much there no, anyway. No, no. I mean, if the cue ball came down to the end rail. He just would have had a shorter kick, I think. That, that ball changed the angle, made him go more to the end rail than he would have been. But now... You better hit it. Whatever you do, hit it. Anything's yeah. better than ball. What do you hand. think, Danny? You go two rails two out of rails. the corner? Yeah. Definitely. It's a bigger ball. Two rails. Well, you got uh, almost, uh, you know, three times two and a quarter. So you got six and three quarters inches to shoot at if you kick two rails. And that's what he's doing. It's a pretty big ball. Better hit it good. Nope, he missed another one. That gives it straight to Van Boning. Van Boning likes it. What a great time to, to get ahead of your opponent. One safety, one safety too many that Alcano just couldn't, couldn't reply to. You know, I get the feeling that the Filipinos are not well versed in three cushion billiards. Uh, you know, the, old, the American players learn to play three cushions. Most of them do. And you learn those angles because he just doesn't see the angles that well. Well, he shot it way too short. He had to go a little wider. But, but when he you talk about it, Efren is a great three yeah, cushion player. And yeah. In fairness, Elkanos missed two easy escapes here. Like, that wasn't a tough escape. No. Exactly. But yeah. he might be looking to be too precise with his hits. He missed those two pretty bad. I mean, he missed them by a full half ball. I didn't like the speed he shot. He shot way too long. He could have gone a little shorter. Well, Alcano was 8-6 up at one stage, and Shane Van Boning has just won three in a row. He's 9-8 in front now, and with the break to come in rack number 18. If he sorts out the mystery of the break, could put a little space between them. Here's uh, Shane's uh, record going into this one. He's had some close matches up there. Yeah. 
Well, all the eights and nines, those are pretty uh, hairy. But they're all Ws. They're all Ws. He'd like to get one more W. Now Kano really with two errors in judgment from the escape aspects in that last rack. Improved costly, Van Boning with the break. Child cue ball. Oh, that cue ball was tracking towards that corner and it was kicked. Definitely. Well, no open pocket on the one. Well, he can shoot it off the uh, eight in the side, but the other, the three balls in the way of position, if the three wasn't there, it would be a much better chance. Or he could even bank at one rail and, and you're gonna have a shot on the two. Look, take a look at the balls, Danny. It looks like he could play a safe off the one and come down behind that four, seven, nine, those three balls. Come yeah. down to the end rail, you know, go one rail. Yeah, he could. Below he the has, eight. And that's what he's been doing lately. Yeah. When there's a little gamble to the position, he's been playing safety wisely for a 24-year-old man. He's got the wisdom of Socrates. Well, he's going a different way. He looks like he's he wants to bank the one and yeah. play position for the two. Well, he'll get it. But he's, he may get away with this. Yeah, high Not risk. Really. He gotta, boy, look at this. He Not was really. right on the two. Yeah, if he, he makes that there. bank, that over. rack's over. And he knew that. Now, Ryan only has to shoot the one straight on, stop the cue ball, and he's going to snooker him with the nine. Yep. No, no uh, brain surgery here. Shoot it and stop. That's all. Now Kano has to be very happy to get back to the table so soon. Well, the eight ball's in a real tough spot, this rack. I like to say that's the hardest place on the table for a ball to be. Yeah, well, on let's get through this first. Well, he, he did that, but he cut it a little bit and froze him. That's a great shot. Yeah, he concentrated on that cue ball there. Yeah. Shooting it straight, the way I call it, he might have made the ball and snuck it himself. Great hit. Now just fire at this, and the only problem here is you're going to put the only ball that's messed up, the eight in play, if you kick. I you think know, you kick soft way. here. I think you kick soft off the side rail and just try to roll up against the one. Oh, I don't know about that one. But he doesn't have... What else can he do? He doesn't have much. N there isn't a positive uh, thought here for sure. I wouldn't want to shoot it hard and break out that eight either. Well, you yeah, can just shoot like it this. easy and break just out like the eight. This. Just like this, nice and soft. Just roll up against the one. He can do it. I know you can do it, I, Shane. I now saw Reyes it. play this shot. <laughs> I saw Reyes play this shot where he had, he just feathered it slowly, hit the one dead on, and left his opponent with nothing. You know, and, it takes, and, a and lot of, takes a lot of self-belief, a lot of confidence. 1944, I saw Ralph Greenleaf shoot this. Oh, wait a minute. I got a, a Ralph Greenleaf story. <laughs> oh, man. Well, he's sleeping in the street with that idea. He just didn't see the angle at all. Ball in hand. He did not see the angle at all. Getting from the one to the two means Alcano has to miss contact in the eight. And where he's positioned that cue ball, that shouldn't be any problem. I don't know. He might I touch the eight here. I mean, after he hits the one, he may touch the eight. There yeah, he's you go. Get. Change of the hair. I don't know. This doesn't look automatic to me. He has but to miss the eight, though. Oh, it, it doesn't have much room to miss the eight. He wants to maybe hit the eight and move that. That's he what he did. How oh, about that? he did a that? good job. He How did about a good that? job. That's yeah. a great shot. Yes, it was. He made two great shots in a row. Yeah. Good safety, good shot. And a little gamble there because if he hit the eight too full, he would have never got to the two. Yeah, I just want to get back into the middle of the table from this three. The four at the opposite end. Well, the only thing tricky here is his position right now from the three to the four. 
probably ought to keep the cue ball out in the middle of the table. You're right. Don't gamble on trying to get too good on this ball. Make sure you're not snookered. Go to path of less snookerdom. That's what I like to say. But he, well, he wa he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Perfect speed. He wants this angle. He got there. Perfect. That's a gamble, I'll tell you. I don't yeah. like going to path. You're going to be behind a couple balls for a while. Two inches shorter, he wouldn't yeah. have been there. He handled it. You know, this game is destined to be Hill Hill. This this match, it I should say. It just had that feel. It yeah. had the feel well, that it was going to be, yeah. you know, a photo finish. And that's because nobody's stringing games. They're winning one at a time. The break hasn't really favored the the breaker in this match. It's almost like they've been alternating breaks. And to once again level the score. Elcano knocks the nine in. Three in a row went to Van Boning. Race before, but let me tell you the Greenleaf story quick. You know, when they put him in his coffin at the wake, Irving Crane, Jimmy Karras, and Ponzi went to see him. And he had his Rambo along his left side, Greenleaf did, and in his right hand he had a cue ball. And Ponzi, Ponzi looked in the coffin and said, where's the chalk? <laughs> True story. <laughs> he was buried with his Rambo yeah. and a cue ball in his right hand, but no chalk. So he wasn't planning to play much, I guess. He's got a lot of players up there now to play with. You know, everybody I know is dead. I used to yeah. tell stories and say, ask, and I couldn't because that guy was dead. You know what I mean? Ask me. No, he's dead too. Ain't it something George Rue's still alive? And he's from the Greenleaf area. Yeah. He played Greenleaf. Mm -hmm. Well, Kano at 9-9 nine, nine with Van Boning. This sure is suspenseful. Is someone going to break loose and make a ball and run out? Soft break. And surprise, surprise, nothing, nothing. down. Oh, this has been a the consistent theme throughout this final. Well, these he's got to fall on the two. These players just have not found the speed that's going to bring about success with the break. Not yet. Yep. Not, a, not a lot of time left. That's the reason for our nip and tuck, tie, tie, tie. Because no one is stringing two games together, and it's all because no success on the break. That's a good shot if he gets an angle. It's not an easy shot. No. You've got to be very precise with this shot. And watch out for that point of the side. It looks like it's not there, but it's caught me a couple times. I like the trick you showed me. When you're shooting the ball down the rail past the side, you pull that point in for a second. <laughs> you're, not, uh, you're not supposed to do that, so I was cheating that It time. works. <laughs> it wor right. Danny, I never forgot that. Okay. Meanwhile, he got perfect here. Yeah, he got the cue ball off the rail further than I thought he could. Just roll forward. Boy, he punched that one in. Well, there's two ways to shoot that shot. Yeah. You could roll it in and trust the equipment, or you could pound it in and, and cinch it. Shane hasn't had a Hill Hill match in this event yet. The closest he came was in the winner's side final against McCurry. Tomoki Makari, 11-9. Yeah, See, once again, I think he's, he's shooting too slow. Get up and run the balls. Yep. Unbelievable. You just, you know, for a minute, the worst fears were realized, and then three rails here. Perfect. 
perfect. He's going to have an angle to just draw it back and shoot that eight in that pocket where he's standing right now. Looks like a perfect angle. You want to get close to the eight because the nine's down this end. Like that, he did that perfectly. And he's got an angle where when he makes it, he's not going to be on the cushion. That's important. Well, surviving the scare there for a minute. And then uh, now every chance to go 10-9 in front. And still we wait for one of these guys to start asserting himself and taking control of this match because as yet, neither player seems willing to. 10-9, then boning. The race to 13. Well, it sounds like he gets more applause. I think it's fair to say that he's uh, got a few more fans in the arena than does Ronnie Elcano. If this were the Ted Mack show, I mean, he would be winning. If this were the Philippines, it would be a lot different. <laughs> oh, they'll like him over in the Philippines in a couple of weeks, but uh, if he's playing Ronnie Elcano, they'll be screaming for Ronnie. Rack number 20 of a possible 25 Watch look out, out six. look out. He got blocked. Last ball rolling. Well, I'm not so way. sure. He might have a cut in the side, but. Well, I'm not so sure that that six is blocking it. I think that one passes into the side. There's enough sticking out there for Alcano to, okay. to knock he, this one in. How do you get to the two doing that? You hit the three. I don't know if it's that thin, but you're right. He may have a cut at this ball on the side, but. What do you do with the two ball? You don't want to shoot difficult shots for nothing. You want to get rewarded if you play them. Well, you know, if he cuts the one on the side, Dan, the cue ball is going down towards the, the three and two. And the way they're sitting, it looks like even if he goes down to the near the end rail, he might be able to kick behind the, the three ball to hit the uh, two. I think it's going wide of the three. I think yeah. it's going. Well, that's what I mean. I don't think he'll hit the three, but I think you could actually shoot shoot under the three and make the no, two. No, that's what I mean. I don't think he can go that sharp. He's going to go wide to the left. Yeah, I of see. That. Yeah. I see. I see. I believe mean. that, you know, but we'll see in a second here. Well, he could actually cut the two in if he's off the rail far enough. Yeah, but look, he's hitting it so thin, the cue ball's got to fly around. Oh, it's going to go down. Past the three, in between the three and the eight, right there. See it? He went he, wide of it. Yeah, he, he wants to speed. It. Did he? I don't think so. No, not quite. Not quite. He needed to be up about two inches higher. Great attempt. Yeah. Great attempt. But another thing that happened bad, he's on the cushion. If he was an inch off it, he could shoot the two and stick and put the two behind the four, seven, and eight. But yeah, he what can't kind of, do that. Yeah, what kind of safety do you see here? He's got a little bit of a predicament. He's going to have to jack up and get that cue ball to stop and shoot this two straight on. But I it's going to be tough. I can't tell how much of the two he can see. I mean, if he can shoot straight at it, then he might even be able to roll it out of there a little bit. Well, it looks like he can hit it solid, straight as it looks, but he can't make it. But the thing is, he's on the rail. He has to jack up and hit this ball, try to stick it, but I don't think he can. He's still going to two rail it, though. Well, I was wrong again, but he got away with it so far. Did he yeah. ever? Yeah. Yeah. And he's scratching his head. He, he copied his idol, Efren. Efren likes to do that when he thinks he uh, he made a mistake and got away with it. And Efren Reyes is his idol. He told me that yesterday. Well, he knocked his idol out of the tournament. Alcano beating three Filipino do we juggernauts. Know how, do we know how old Ronnie is? 35. He's 35. Yeah, he's been around a while. 35 years old. And grew up watching all the superstars in the Philippines. And took out Reyes, Warren Kiamco, Jose Perica in this event. 
and was finally beaten and beaten soundly by Van Boning, 11-4. What part of the Philippines does he live in? He hails from where the world championships are in Manila. Manila? I know I told you this before. How many islands do you think there are in, in the Philippine Islands? I'm guessing 700 to 1,000. No, yeah. it's uh, your, you might have, it's yeah, like 20,000 I'll, I'll, I'll or something. I'll give it to you within 1,000 and you win. 7,100 islands. Wow. Wow. And there's a pool player on every one of them. Only one? On every one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, it might be more because they got yeah. someone to play with. Oh, he's going to curve this. He's jumping he's over the eight. Oh, he's jumping. Jump kick. He kicked it. Watch Looks out, like cue ball. Oh. Yeah, he's okay. He's okay. Listen to the crowd. 10-9 in favor of Van Boning. And he just got a great shot. And looking to reap the rewards from it. That was a great shot. Good time for it. I think the only choice here for Alcano is to try and tie something up. Right. And this is going to be touch. This will be all about the touch. He Maybe roll the three up against the five? Against, or against the eight. The four? Against the eight. Against because the eight. Tie it, the no three matter up. what you do, you at least change that combination. Look at the seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah. Try to roll it at the eight and freeze it there. And let him have ball in hand. You might get back to the table because of it. But you can't leave the three there because you don't have a real good kick. He's trying to two rail kick it like Efren did oh, once upon a time. I don't know time. about this. Side to side to the end. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. He Whoa. just missed it. Good attempt. But it looked uh, good for a second. Good they're, attempt. They're applauding the attempt the here. This terrific crowd in the Chalk Off Arena here in the conference center applauding a great effort from Elkano. I think at least half yeah. of them applauding, the other half applauding the fact that Van Boning's come to the table with ball in hand. Efren made a shot like that. Who was it against? Earl. Earl. Earl, yeah. I can still hear Earl yelling about it. He kicked the eight in and made the nine. Well, what happened is he had played a safety, but he made a ball, and now he had the eight ball on the end rail. No shot. He went two rails, made it, and then made the nine. Shane's got a golden opportunity in this match right now. A two-game lead now is big. Well, if he gets to 11-9, Jay, it means that Elkano would have to beat him 4-1 from that stage, and Shane would have the break. So, as you said, real big. Yep. I was thinking for a minute there that it might have got too silent. All of a sudden, there was no sound. <laughs> got plenty of angle on the five. He's got to get back over to the same side of the table he's at now. If he could get to where he is right now, that would be perfect. Yeah. Looks good. And that's right about where the cue ball was. <laughs> Now those are not easy shots, folks, for you out there watching all this. That is not an easy shot, especially under the circumstances here. U.S. Open title, he's 24 years old, 50,000, 20,000 more for the Moscone Cup because he's sure to get that spot. You know, you can really appreciate how tight these pockets are when you see that overhead view. Look at those pocket openings, how they're cinched up. I mean, they're small be right at home for you Jimmy it's like a snooker pocket it does look like a snooker pocket doesn't it these pockets and that's why I'm up here Jay <laughs> <laughs> you're so modest Jimmy if they were snooker balls you'd be down there Jimmy okay this is it this is the combination if he makes this he will have a shot at the seven ball yeah and you can see it's not dead set so he's got to just change the angle a little bit from the seven to the eight right into the throat of the pocket Oh, he fell short little, there. Little, little short, short of ideal position. But he's, he's okay. He should still get this. Yeah, he can go three rails under the nine. Exactly. Just pocket the ball, hit the cue ball low, total concentration on the seven. The cue ball will do the rest. We saw him miss a shot very similar to this in the opening rack, the nine. If you remember, he undercut it. Bite your tongue. <laughs> I 
yeah. side rail, end rail, and back side rail Three around cushions, the nine ball. Three cushions, hit the cue ball yeah. low, and just total focus, make the seven. The cue ball will do the rest. He did it. He did it. He did, he did it. it. And he's going to be at 11-9. <laughs> the crowd likes it. I wonder if they're starting to sense that Van Boning has just grabbed this match by the scruff of the neck. And the nine deposited. <laughs> Two in a row for Shane, and that's the lead he enjoys, 11-9. This kid has ice water in his veins. This is not an easy spot to be in, especially the re she's had to run. And confirmed by Scott Smith, the race to 13, 11-9 here in Chesapeake. Shane on the verge of the biggest win of his young career. And then he's got to hold his emotions in check. I don't think he's having any problem with that. I think we'll see some emotion if he wins. Rack number 21 of a possible 25. 11-9 the score. Look at this. He made three balls. The nine was tracking. He made They're all going. four balls. Four balls. Watch out, three. Don't get in the way for the kid. Look at this. He's playing five balls. Oh, this is no problem. Now, does he just focus completely on the two here, or does he take the cue ball towards the nine? Oh, no, no. Just cinch just the ball. You're the gonna, two. Yeah. yeah. Cinch the ball, and you're going to bounce perfectly. You know, this break reminds me, last night in the final game with Ralph Soquet's match with McCurry, yeah. excuse me, with Ga Ga Gallego, he made five balls on the break. Wow. In the very last game. Four balls. Yeah, he made four. He did it perfectly. Not bad. Not bad. And the four looks like it passes the nine, so he just can float this in. The mystery of the break. All those breaks, he made no balls at all. Now he made four. Isn't that something? Figure that out. Like you said, every break is different, Danny. Well, that's what's great about this game. If you broke the balls every minute for eternity, they would not stop in the same place twice. That's what I say. There's never two games the same. Right. And again, he's picked up the pace here. Well, I think he's starting to smell blood in the water. <laughs> Going to be one game to go. He's on and the hill. He's on the hill. And listen to the crowd. 12-9. Van Boning's biggest lead of the match, and it's coming at the most opportune time. This crowd is going to go crazy if he wins this match. It, it's filled everywhere, not That's only it. around the table there, but all the rest of the bleachers are pretty well filled. I, I, they love The crowd loves Shane. I'll no. tell you what, he's the most popular American player to come along since a young Johnny Archer. We've needed somebody like this in this country for a long time. And the race to 13 can end very quickly with one good break. He duplicates the break you just saw. Okay, he made four balls on the break. Let's see what happens now. Same everything, let's see what happens. He wants to control the cue ball here. He doesn't want to let it get away. Rack number 22, 12-9. Look out. Uh, Oh no. The mystery of the break. Oh, no. I told you. Remains so a mystery. Do you see the stats? 923 to 900. Yeah, they're both shooting good. Yeah. And there will be no early finishes just yet. Not if Elcano has his way. Well, it's a great way to start. Ball in hand. But he can't afford not one mistake from here on. He's got to play perfect the rest of this match. Somewhere in the back of the mi his mind, he's thinking, I don't want to let Shane come back to the table. I'd like to win four games in a row right here. Yeah. And the scary part is he's as capable as anybody. The world champion. Look at this. Behind his back, he's going to shoot. Many times. 
He's way behind. He's shooting behind his back. That's not a hard shot for him. No, apparently not. Apparently not. It went right in. Is he going to play the 4-9 combination? I don't know. No, nah, four passes. Once he gets this ball out of the way, the four, the four passes. But can he shoot it soft enough to get to the side pocket? Or is he going to just go one rail and take the cut? Or is he playing the combination so... Yeah, he's trying. He's to hitting the ball. Yeah, Good shot. Exactly. He didn't like where it was laying. Yeah, he couldn't hit the ball the right speed to play for that side pocket. But if he billiarded it to the side pocket, which he did, this is the result. Well, he got a good result there. It could have turned out a lot worse than that. Perfect angle for an angle. He's got this wreck. Can he get three more? That's the question. Well, we have to see what happens after the break. I got a funny feeling we're still going to have an exciting finish to this match. It's He's been got pretty a little exciting. angle here. Get the cue ball up for the nine. Look how effortless she did that. And the ball stopped perfect. And 12-10 is now the confirmed score here. Elcano to a drift. Three to play. He needs them all. We're back. There's Elcano. He's got to get up and play flawlessly the rest of this match. He handled that rack with no problem. You know, man gets on the hill, there's more pressure than there was before. Kristen Rogers, she's not gonna be making many more walks around the table. And Alcano's hoping she's gonna be making at least two more after this. Well, the ball's in his court. He's got to try and put three racks together. But you got to win the first one before you win three. And you got to make a ball on the break before you shoot again. Uh-oh. Nothing on the break. We'll hear some buzzing now. Fall on to two. Two to the three is no problem. Whole game's falling on to two here. And he could be U.S. Open champ 2007. You know, Danny, it looks like if he just leaves himself a long shot on the two, he's going to be better off. Well, because he won't be gambling on position, is right. what you're saying. Yeah. So in other words, making the two automatically gets you to the three. So yeah. don't gamble on snookering yourself just to get close. This is fine. This is fine. It's just great. what he did. It's just great. what he did. It's great. Oh, I don't, I don't like Elcano's chances anymore. And I don't think Elcano likes Elcano's chances. Well... This is a golden opportunity for Shane to be the U.S. Open nine ball champion. I mean, they're all sitting there. He wanted this angle so he can go one rail to the four in the same pocket. Very, very brilliant thinking, you know, under the heat. Because, you know, you might tend to just shoot it and then after you get to the three, figure out what you want to do. Ahead of time, he knew he needed this angle. He'll get to the four in the same pocket with an angle like this, and it could be history for Mr. Elcano. He has an angle to force this to the right, fall on the five ball. Everything looks good so far. But it is the last rack that yeah. would take with it Yeah, the biggest crown in North America. Yeah, I don't see any problems. The problems here are only gonna be with his nerves. Right, don't hit the seven, you don't need to. Remember, this is the first time he's ever had a chance to win a title like this. 
And he's taking a little more time. Yeah, don't take time. Get up and shoot. He just has to miss the seven. He could even bump the seven. It isn't going to hurt. He's going to have a shot on the six anyway. He got around it. Boy, well, he's lucky he didn't touch it there. I know, but the speed he shot, it went forward more, so that was good thinking. He's feeling the pressure right now. He sees the goal I, line. I think everybody in attendance is feeling the pressure right now. Everybody's holding their breath. He's going to stop right there, shoot the seven, fall on the eight. Oh, total confidence like a seasoned veteran. He's got to lean a lot for this seven ball. Oh, he's rangy. He can do it. He's he's uh, wiry, tall. He c he'll get there. A little more powder on his cue just to keep it gliding smoothly through his cue hand. Go two rails under the nine, I believe, because that's the best way to cinch this ball. He wants to get close to the eight, too. Yeah. He doesn't want to shoot any long shots now. You know, I've seen no emotion whatsoever from Shane all week. I wonder if he gets these three. Are we going to see a little emotion from I this young guy? So. We're going to see a lot. I think we'll be seeing some cue waving. Well, maybe not. You know, he's a calm, cool guy. Maybe, you know, this isn't going to shock him that he won. He actually is a pretty emotional guy if he wins. You'll see. Well, look at this. Volcano's hoping for him to get this over with. How you like it, guys? This is good. Get ready like for it, it, folks. Hold it. Get ready for it. The last trip back for the powder. And Van Boning knows. He's grinning. This is not a hanger. Oh, this is not heck. a hanger. It's not a hanger. No, it's not. He's a little closer to the rail than he wanted oh, to be. Oh, heck, please. Here we go for the title. It is there, and Shane Van Boning has lived the dream here in Chesapeake. 24 years of age, he has captured the biggest crown of his young career. He is the 2007 U.S. Open nine ball champion. Hail Shane Van Boning. Well, Jimmy's going to go down there and start to, to celebrating and interview him. A popular champion, Danny. Yeah. The people, the people's favorite. In a little while, I'm going to go down there with him. So, folks, it was fun all week. God bless you all. I'm going to be joining my partner down there. Danny, I enjoyed working with you, buddy. Thank you later. Well, folks, Shane, Ronnie, can I have both of you up here? Well, it was a great finish to a great tournament. We had the two best players.